In some Asian countries, bears are kept inhumanely, farmed for their bile. They are kept in small cages, and twice a day their bile is extracted and exported to shops throughout Asia. The bile is traditional medicine. In the wild, the Asiatic and Malayan sun bears live between 25 to 30 years. In bile farms, many animals don't make it past the 10th year. There is a high fatality rate. All these bears are traumatized and suffer illnesses. Acres, based in Singapore, is one NGO committed to ending bear bile farming in Asia. Acres is a Singapore-based charity. We founded it in 2001, so we're about 10 years old. And we have a main vision of a world where animals are treated with compassion and respect. But we've now expanded our work, so we have our setup in Laos, in Australia, with projects in Malaysia and in Thailand as well. And it's mainly about promoting animal welfare. We have actually six focus areas. So wildlife rescue and rehabilitation. We run a dedicated wildlife rescue centre in Singapore. We tackle the wildlife trade through our undercover investigations. We have our zoo animal welfare, where we're working on issues of zoos in Singapore, Malaysia and Thailand, promoting cruelty-free living, we're talking about animal testing, factory farming, and of course, our human education and our community outreach efforts. So reaching out to the public, making sure they understand the issue, and more importantly, they join us in this movement. There is a new term coined as con compassionate conservation, and that's what we're all about. We're all about making a difference for the individual animals, as well as the species on a whole. So issues like bear farming, like the dolphin trade, um, these are issues that are also both conservation as well as animal welfare. And we're now trying to bridge these two issues into one. But 10 years ago, I watched a footage about how bears were being farmed in China, where the bear is kept in a cage the size of the bear. They step into their gallbladders and their bowel is drained from them every day. And they live like this for about 10 years. And the only time they get out is when it's time to die and they cut off their paws for bear paw soup and then they take the whole gallbladder itself for traditional Chinese medicine. And if you look at it, when they stab them into the gallbladder, 50% of the bears die at the procedure because it's done without anesthesia. And they literally bleed to death. And that's, we always say those are the lucky ones, the lucky ones that die upon the stab. The unlucky ones that survive, as I mentioned, they spend 10 years like that. And that's why our campaign slogan is, before they kill them, they make them wish they were dead. Because every day they're suffering, not just physically, but psychologically as well. And if you ask me, this is one of the cruelest things we've done to animals in the world today. In countries that you operate in, or in Asia, uh, what are the numbers of bears that are farmed in this way? It, we're looking at tens of thousands. In China, there are about 10,000 bears that are being farmed for their bow. In Vietnam, about 4,000. In Korea, about 1,004. In Laos, about 100. So these are the, the countries that are farming the bears. But if you look at the problem now, which is the the countries that are selling the products, then this is an Asia-wide problem. In Singapore, we found it on sale. In Malaysia, in Thailand, in Laos, in China, in Philippines, it, it goes on. But that's really the, the, what we've been focusing on for the last 10 years, to try and stop the demand for these products. Because ultimately, if there's demand, there's going to be supply. But we managed to reduce this quite significantly in Singapore now. In 10 years ago, we did our undercover survey, so we found 4 out of 5 traditional Chinese medicine shops selling these products even though it's completely illegal in Singapore. But five years later, we did another undercover, and this time around, we found one in five. So quite a significant drop. And towards the end of 2009, we realized that we needed a multi-pronged approach. So we can't just focus on reducing the demand. We now needed to go to the source country to also start our work there and try and stop um, bear farming from increasing as an industry and try and curb it altogether. So not just acres, but working with other NGOs like Animals Asia, like Free the Bears, um, they're all working towards ending bear farming. And I think if we use this multi-pronged approach, then ultimately we can bring about an end to this problem that um, the unfortunate truth is it's not going to go um, in the next few years. In fact, it's an industry that is expanding now. And we really need everybody's help to try and bring it to an end. And the key really here is they are critically endangered. There are some studies that show now that there are more bears in bear farms than there are left in the wild. And we're literally wiping out this species. We're wiping them out just because we want the, the bow that's used for traditional Chinese medicine. And that's something that I always add. That's the key thing here is that, yes, 
bare bile is scientifically proven to be effective to solve gallstones. Um, but in the reality here is that there are 50 different herbs that are equally effective that we can use that are obviously more animal friendly. No animal gets harmed when you take the herbs. And if it's equally effective, why don't we just choose the more humane options now? And that's what we've been working on with the TCM community. So when we did our press conference, we got them to bring all the different herbs now that they will provide as an alternative. So if you go to some of the shops that we work with in Singapore and you say, I want to buy bear bao or siong dan in Mandarin, they will now say we don't sell it, but here's the different herbs um, that can be used instead. And that's something that we need to focus on now. So we're not saying for everyone to die from your me medical problems, but we're saying let's choose a more humane alternative. And surely as we progress in the world today, we should choose a more humane approach. Is you are educating users um, on uh, why not to use bare bile as, as an alternative and there are other alternatives for them, like herbs, as you say. But how do you um, tackle the, the farms? I think what we're doing in Laos now, so we, we're finally registered in Laos as an international NGO, and we're going there with open arms. So we're not going there and criticize how cruel they are and how they should. Uh, they are exploiting the bears, but we're going to have open arms to say we're here to help and try and make a difference together with the Lao government. We'll provide an alternative, so we are going to build a rescue center in Lao to rescue some of these bears. We're going to work with the local communities where we now hire these people to look after the bears. Uh, we're beside a protected area as well. So essentially, it's, it's not just about rescuing bears. We want to change the whole mindset where now killing a bear, yes, you make some profits, but keeping them alive and protecting them, you actually have you can depend on that as a livelihood now. You become a protector instead of an exploiter. We're going to do a launch of education programs in Laos, so make sure that the kids, um, the Lao kids understand why we're doing this, why we're helping the bears. They can come down to the education center, uh, they can come down and volunteer and make a difference as well. And that's a long-term plan. And we're showing the government as well that this is, um, in terms of the economy, it's something that's much better. Bear farming, yes, it does bring some profits, but to a very few people, a very minority people, international trade is illegal, you can't tax it, hires very few people and the ecotourists that go to Laos don't want to see bears in cages. Whereas if we build a rescue center model and use it as an ecotourist attraction, then the whole country benefits as well. And we're trying to show them the economic terms as well as obviously the animal welfare and conservation value of protecting these bears. So again, actually it's, it's better economics, isn't it? Um, one is if there's no demand, okay, um, then you know, uh, the farms will suffer, uh, but for a lot of the farmers, it's, it's a form of livelihood for them. Unfortunately, not. A lot of these farmers are rich. Um, in China, for example, a lot of them are owned by big pharmaceutical companies. Um, these are not the, the poor poachers that are out there that hunt for a livelihood. These are people that are really rich. A lot of the bear farms in, in Laos are run by wealthy people. But of course, we're not saying that let's cut off the whole um, supply and let the, the farm, the workers there starve to death. We're saying we can offer an alternative to them, and again, as protectors rather than exploiters. You mentioned just now in China, um, pharmaceutical companies own uh, the farms. I mean, what sort of pharmaceuticals? They, well, obviously, they're not the, the multinationals, are they? They're local Chinese companies. Yes, but unfortunately, there is, and it's really bad news for us. Um, so if you look at, I mean, I've just covered this as a whole. If you look at the, the work that we've done over the last 10 years, and I always admit this, the reality is that we've all failed. There are now more bears in bear farms than there were 10 years ago. The bow production has now increased as compared to 10 years ago. And that's really because they're now expanding bear bow. It's not just a medicine, but they've put it into toothpaste now. And it's on sale in China already. And there is a pharmaceutical company that is now trying to IPO. They're going to public this because they need to raise funds to expand the bear farm from their current 470 bears. They want to expand it to 1,200 bears. And that scares the living daylight out of us because it's now no longer just a few people benefiting. They want to sell their shares to everyone so that everyone now has a stake in exploiting bears. And there are a lot of groups like Animal Asia that are trying their best to block this. And that's hopefully that goes ahead. But again, it's just, we need to always remember that these are not poor people running the farms. There are so many alternatives out there. And it's something that we, are, we now need to push them towards taking. What is the value of the trade? And um, <coughs> Some of the studies show now that the, the price of bear bile in the, in the black market is now equivalent to the price of heroin. It is a phenomenally lucrative business. Um, in Laos, for example, one milliliter of bile is worth about 600 baht. So maybe about roughly 50 ringgit. And if you imagine, we can drain about 10 milliliters out of the bear every day. It, 
it comes out to a lot of money. In Singapore, we found gallbladders um, that are worth about ten thousand Singapore dollars. So if you look at it, the bear is like a walking medicine hall. We're gonna stab him, him or her. We're gonna drain the bowel every day. One ml, about 20, 25, 20 US dollars. When the fella dies, we kill him off. We cut out the pores for bear pore soup, and we take the whole gallbladder out as well. In Singapore, it's worth about um, three hundred dollars per liang, so per twenty-seven point five grams. So it's without a doubt, it's lucrative. A few people benefit, but we're trying to bring about the other angle now, which is the welfare of the animals. We live in this world now where we keep promoting and preaching about being responsible global citizens throughout the ASEAN region. But let's be responsible towards not just the human species, but to the animals as well. You've seen the footage, and I, I shared about the, the bears that held my hand. That It's amazing the amount of compassion and respect these animals have. We tortured them for three years, and yet when I squat beside her, the only thing she wants to do is to hold my hand. Um, I've always said we have so much to learn from these animals in terms of compassion and respect. And let's stop torturing them. Let's um, foster some compassion and respect for these animals. It's quite uh, shocking to see one of the footage where there was a baby bear. Uh, I don't know, probably, uh, how, how old was that bear? About a year old, or maybe less than that? A few months old. Few months old. Hardly even had any teeth. Um, I met him, named him Droopy, because he had very droopy eyes. But I met him at the bear farm in Laos, where he's obviously been poached in a while. To poach them, most of the time the mother gets killed, they take the little baby, they put him in a cage. Uh, roughly at about two years old, they stab them and start draining the bowel. But when I met Droopy, he just entered the farm. And if you see the, the, the footage, he was very playful, he wanted to suckle my hand. Because they miss their mums, they need the maternal behaviour, the suckling behaviours that we humans have as well. And it was very playful for a start, but I visited him again two months later, and you've seen the video, he's just completely gone mad. They start pacing, he was very aggressive, and ultimately you see the same behaviours in humans in psychiatric hospitals, where we can't cope, we go mad, we perform the same behaviours. And ultimately he decided enough was enough. He couldn't live a life like that. He starved himself and he starved himself to death. Seven months after entering the farm, he died. And he's just one out of the tens of thousands that die almost every day in these farms. I'm in that bear farm alone. We, they start off with 21 bears. When we arrive, about 12 have died. And that's a 50% mortality. If you imagine that, just for a, med a medicinal purpose for which there are over 50 different alternatives, surely we have to choose the more humane alternatives now. In, in places like Lao, okay, uh, because it's a small, relatively improvised country, uh, it's easier perhaps you know, for uh, groups such as yourself to go in and talk to the government and persuade the government and even go in and talk to the people and maybe per persuade the people, right? But a massive country like China, you know, um, that's, that's going to be a tough call for you, right? Um, there's Animals Asia Foundation that's working there now. They also run a rescue centre in Chengdu. They have been um, shutting down some of the farms together with the Chinese government now. I think they've rescued over 200 or 300 bears already from these farms. And there's an uh, increasing number of provinces in China now that are going bear farm free. But of course, this is um, it's a growing problem. I've said all that, that they're closing now, but the reality is a lot of them are merging to form bigger bear farms. So closing down the smaller ones. But again, it's now reaching out to the Chinese population and telling them again their alternatives. Something I need to add as well is the bow is not something that is very healthy to take. If you realize when you stab them and you drain the bow, like in Laos, they give it to you fresh. So straight out of the bear, they put it into the little, um, just a little bottle and they refrigerate it. But it's not just the bowel that comes out, it's also the pus in the blood. And there are doctors now, the TCM doctors in China, in Vietnam, they've all come out to say that this is something unhealthy to take. If it's pure bowel, maybe there's some scientific value, but remember you are drinking the pus and the blood of a very unhealthy bear. And that completely violates the principle of TCM, which is the balance of nature. You can't torture a bear and drain the bowel from them and, and it will be completely not aligned to the principles of TCM. And obviously the bears themselves uh, are not very healthy, you know? so they could be suffering from all sorts of diseases, which could be transferred through the bowel to you as a user. I mean, a lot of the bears that are rescued, they have tumours. Um, a lot of them, the gallbladders have to be removed. Um, and a lot of them pass away because it's all cancerous already. But imagine then you're taking medicine from these bears that are not very healthy. I think what we're doing in Lao now is, is the first step forward. Where slowly but surely we want to phase out bear farming. But the key here is that we need everybody to become aware of this issue. As with all the campaigns, the silent majority is not going to win it. And the, the, vast, the vast majority of people I speak to have never heard of bear farming because this goes on behind the scenes. 
even though in Singapore, for example, when we do our road shows, we tell people not to take bow, they have no idea that the bears are treated so cruelly just to produce the bow. But once we get people more aware of this issue, we now need them to take action to make sure that we stop selling the products in Singapore, in Malaysia, in Thailand, in all the other ASEAN countries. And slowly but surely, we can wipe out this whole industry. But if people remain ignorant and quiet about this issue, then we will never see any change. And the bears will continue to suffer, and ultimately they will go extinct. So we are raising funds now for our Lao program. Um, we're trying to raise about a million dollars for the start of the first year of operation to build a rescue center as well as to hire um, Lao members and staff to help us look after the bears, help us with our education program, our wildlife crime program there as well. Again, the key here is that we are trying to make this a very Lao based. So even though it's a Singapore NGO working there, we're trying to hire about 23 or 24 out of the 27 staff to be Laotian so that ultimately the country takes over and try and address their problem. And the Lao government seems to be quite open to your um, efforts. We're working very closely with them. I think that's the key. Um, when people watch the footage, they all um, they all get angry, which is um, quite obvious when you see the bears being treated like that. But the Lao government has welcomed us with open arms to say let's work together towards resolving this. So I think the key message here is don't boycott Lao after you watch the video. We're working very closely with them. They're open to dialogue. They're open to working with us. So we need to now um, approach this very positively. Even though you get very angry when you see the footage, just bear in mind that there, there can be a positive ending to this if we remain positive about this issue. And if we channel our anger towards something that's positive as well.